Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome. So today is part two of the warm-up series, and this is something that I struggle with a lot and have worked on a bunch and by no means am an expert, but after hanging out with my buddy Tim Pierce a lot and some watching some other players that really record and play for a living, this part is huge. And what it is is the ability to take something simple like a chord progression and play something very cool, very emotional, heartfelt, if you will, but an interesting part on top of it. Now, a lot of times that is picking parts, right? So arpeggiated notes. Okay, not one of my strong suits. So this is something I definitely put into my practice regimen every single day. And keep in mind, when you're playing guitar in a band or for a living or recording or whatever, 90% of what you do is gonna be rhythm. So you might as well focus a lot on playing rhythm. So, if we're to take a simple chord progression, A minor, F, C, and G, one of the things I'll start with is just simply going up and down the chord, you know? One of the things I try to do in that chord progression is find out if there's any notes that goes between chords that you can leave ringing. Okay, so the A minor, you know, to go into the F, not a lot you can do, but let's check the next chord. If I take off my middle finger and leave the G open, I can come up with a pattern. I'm going to the C, for instance, where I can leave that G ringing. So you get this nice sound of, of something going all the way through the progression rather than the notes being cut off when you go to switch to a chord. Now that wasn't the most polished example, but I'll show you more examples as we go along. So for the next one, C, obviously G again. So then I'll basically go straight up and down. Okay. From there, what you want to start doing is varying the picking pattern. So maybe you're going down, you know, the first four, and then you mix it up. All right, so I went down. Down four, up, and then went back to that G. Okay, so we got. And then I can go to the F, and now the F again, if I just do a traditional style F chord, it's only the bottom four strings, D to E. So your, you know, the ability to really mix up that pattern, you know, isn't, isn't there as much, but you can play with it. Same kind of idea, so. The C, you got five strings, so. Right, so I can mix it up on that one. Right? And since the G's all six strings, or you can make it all six strings, there's a lot you can do. Now, why you want to do that? There's two reasons to do that. So say you're a guitar player in a two guitar player band. One guy's holding down strumming, which you're stoked if that's your part because it's easier. <laughs> but if you're the other guy, say an electric player playing with an acoustic player, you want your parts to be a little bit more, you know, melodic, you know, and, and have a little bit more content to them. You're filling out the sound and you can also really provide a big backdrop of melody because you can pick single strings. You're not just, which is great. Right? So, 
So the next part is obviously adding parts to that, hammer-ons and pull-offs, while making sure all those notes are ringing out. And this is where it gets tricky for me. You know, you're doing hammer-on runs, pull-off runs. Within the context of doing arpeggiated picking patterns, so letting those notes all ring out and not cutting any of them off becomes a lot harder. One of the things you really want to keep in mind is keeping the curvature of your fingers right on the fingertips, right? So you got... Right, so now I'm adding also, you know, working in my finger exercises because I'll do a hammer on run from say two to three going from the A minor. And I'll go two to three on the D. And then maybe sneak my pinky in there. So inadvertently you're really working on your finger dexterity as well because it becomes kind of like a you know, twister at that point. <laughs> trying to do cool runs and you know expand the harmonic content of, of what you're doing, but at the same time, still keeping in mind that it's gotta work and it's gotta be fluid, right? So the C, you know, you can do all sorts of cool stuff with the C. You can hammer on the D, open D to the second fret. Right, you can do that, you can pull off that first finger. Right, so it could be like. See right there, choke arama. So right there I'd be like, okay, that is a movement that I need to work on. So we got. To the chord progression again. So it's making those cool or maybe hitting two strings at the same time. Right, coming. Right, now that's just in that chord progression, right, in the open position, you can take that chord progression, apply the same thing, but really add complexity to it by going up to the other inversions of the chord. So you have, right? So that's the A minor, right? Part of this big A minor chord. I think this one's like an F2 chord, I think is what. And then you can go to C right here. And then you can add one of those melodies that travels down. Right? So what I did there was I went. Right, so. That C is right there. All I have to do is take off this finger and add this finger. And then I have a G chord right here. So you can do like the Hendrix C, uh, you know, kind of. Right, and get back into your open position. Now, all I did there was I took a D shape of a G chord, hammered on, and then I'm walking down my scale. So it's. And that can get me back into open position. But at the same time, you're starting to really try to keep the melody going, everything working, and working multiple spots on the neck. So you can. It's not perfectly smooth. It's not something I'd want to hit the stage with, right? But it's an idea of something 
to practice. I could practice that, you know, for 20, 30 minutes, and at that point, make it believable enough to where I could play it and pull it off. So the idea is you're getting this hand, right? Our first lesson was all about dexterity here, which really comes into play when you start doing all that. Right, and moving the fingers, right, all around. And then keeping those notes ringing and being, uh, you know, accurate when you're picking these. So that's what I spend a lot of time on now. You know, I used to just play scales all day long and that's really cool. And, and it, you want to focus on, on when, when you're thinking of your practice regimens, where it is you're going, right? As a player, if you want to be Van Halen, obviously spend a lot of time ripping through those scales and getting your hammer-ons and pull-offs and all that stuff down. If you want to be singer songwriter guy or gal, stuff like this really pays off because it forces you not only to be able to pick and do really cool parts, but it really helps develop your ear and your sense of melody too. Now, if you want to become the guy or the gal that can do everything, then obviously you got to work on a lot of stuff. Our next lesson is going to be more on, you know, practicing building up your melodic ideas, which we kind of got into there at the end but we'll get into even more of a soloing approach to that in the next lesson. So spend a lot of time, take a really basic chord progression. You know, so many songs are basic chord progressions and really spend some time messing around with them. And if it's something, if like you're a TV watcher or whatever, you know, say you watch a couple hours of TV a day, I threw mine out and it was the best thing I ever did for my guitar playing. <laughs> but if you got one and you got a couple shows you watch, you know, a big percentage of those shows is commercials. So just sit on the couch and do that kind of mindless practicing stuff while there's a commercial or something going on. And then before you know it, you know, you're getting in a lot of other kind of practice time without even really having to think about it. But you get to work on those parts. So spend all the time that you can trying to focus your practicing on what your goals are. And that'll really, really help. You guys are awesome thanks for hanging in there you're amazing thanks for the support if you like what you see by all means spread the word share the videos far and wide <laughs> that would help me out i'd totally appreciate it you're awesome stay tuned for part three i'll catch you next time